I'm glad to be here today, but before I start, I'd like to have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, I, I thank you for the opportunity to speak today on behalf of your Son, Jesus Christ. I thank you for your watched care and your unending love, a love that we cannot even comprehend. As I speak today, Lord, let it only be your words that proceed from my mouth. Let it only be your words that I hear in my ears. And may you have mercy on each and every soul in this sanctuary and bless them abundantly with your Holy Spirit, with your joy and your peace. And I pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, it's been an interesting week for me today. You know, this, I keep on saying to everybody, I'm a missionary. I just, uh, I was a mechanic. I was a logger. I was a mechanic in, in the military also. I was a combat engineer. I've welded up and created crane booms and all sorts of things in this world. But the best and the greatest job that I've had is being a missionary. Amen. But you never know what God's going to do with you. You never know who's listening, who's watching, who's paying attention to what you're doing, what you're saying. I originally was a, a Lutheran. For many, many years, and I was very high in the church. I pretty much ran everything. And I had a, I had a man come to my garage one night, and I assumed he was a Jehovah Witness. I didn't know. I just, by the appearance, and he walked in. And I work in my garage at night after I got home from work. I would work in my garage fixing people's vehicles. And... Uh, and he walked in and uh, saw he had the Bible. And he, he asked me, he says, I haven't noticed you in my church down the road on Saturday. And I said, no, I'm a Lutheran. And I said, uh, and if you've got some opinions to give me, unless you can prove what you're saying to me out of, out of that Bible, I don't want to hear your speech tonight. I'm busy. And I was not very nice. And uh, he proceeded to ask me, why don't you go to the church down the road? That's on Sabbath, on Saturday. I said, because I told you, I'm a Lutheran. And he said, what if I could show you you're wrong? Well, how does that make you feel right away? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, because of my poor attitude, I didn't stop working. Even when he was there talking, I kept working. And he said, well, I'll show you. And he opened up the, the Bible, and I said, I didn't want to have any of your opinion. If you couldn't show it to me in black and white, I don't want to know it. He did. He did. He actually did for about three hours that night. <laughs> and uh, before he left, I was feeling angry because I'd been lied to for many years. Then I felt relieved that now I'm understanding truth. And I felt a peace that God sent somebody to me to help me. Doesn't it feel good when somebody is willing to come and help you for nothing? They just want to help you? How many times does it happen to you every day and you don't know it? How many times by your conduct, your character, your words, your joy, your songs, 
How many times are you touching somebody else's heart and you don't even know it? For whatever reason, God's impressing me to tell you my day yesterday. That isn't part of my sermon. Yesterday I was asked to go with a semi to pick up uh, a storage trailer, another 53-foot trailer, uh, for a mission group, uh, Mexico Missions. And I had a friend that went with me. So the catch was, when you get to go pick up this trailer, all eight tires are flat. <laughs> so this is going to be a day. So I went there, and they give me an address, and it's uh, for a farmhouse out in the field. So I went to this farmhouse, and I got talked to the guy, and he said, yeah, the trailers aren't here. I said, oh, yeah, I figured that. He said, they're 15 miles the other direction. I'll give you an address once you sign all this paperwork. And, and I was very pleasant with him. I wasn't cranky, and uh, he was joking around with me, and I joined right in with him, and I was very pleasant with him. And he said, you know, this is unusual to have somebody so kind, and he can joke around with me. And we were getting ready to leave. And he said, can I pray with you? And I said, well, yes, certainly. We're always looking for a blessing. He said, boy, you're unusual. <laughs> and it was a good prayer. It was a sincere prayer. It was a blessing. But he said, when you go to the trailer place, he said, there's some young people there that do the maintenance on the trailers. And, and he said, basically, you're going to a big field where those trailers are parked, and it's a lot of mud. <clears throat> I thought, oh, boy, well, God, what am I getting into? I don't, I'm sitting here with a street tractor, and you're putting me in a mud hole. <laughs> so we get to this place, and the guys had kind of a chip on their shoulder. He didn't want to be there. But I greeted him, and I shook his hand, and I said, yeah, I'm Bob. And he says, do you know what you're doing? I said, yeah, I'm looking for this trailer. And I said, this is the number. And he said, well, you know what you're in for? And I said, yeah. He said, did you buy it? I said, no, I'm picking it up for a missionary group. Did they tell you what you're in for? I said, yeah, they told me the tires are flat. He said, okay, you're on your own. He said, I need to get out of here before such and such a time. I don't remember the time he told me. I said, no problem. I got a sermon to preach Saturday. I want to be out of here before Sabbath starts too. And didn't, didn't cross my mind that he was a Sunday keeper. I, I didn't even think of it. So we started with the, t the changing the tires, getting the lug nuts off. Now each lug nut is torqued between five, 450 and 500 foot pumps. So it took two big guys on a ratchet with a six foot extension on that end of that ratchet. And we were trying to break him loose. Well, we snapped the tool. So then I had to tell the guy, well, I got to go to a shop and get it. I got to get another tool. He said, good luck. He called around to a couple places and they didn't have any. He said, you can try O'Reilly's up on uh, Mount Eagle. So I went up there, O'Reilly, nobody had, nobody had the tool. But I was impressed not to leave the counter. And I was talking with an older gentleman there, he's in his late 70s. And all of a sudden, the manager came out from the back of the counter, and he says, here, this was in the back room. It was the tool I needed, but it looked like it had been in a pile of grease for many, many years. So I went back to the trailer place. I said, God blessed us. Here it is. You know, I cleaned it up a little bit. It worked great. It was starting to get late. And I just got all, four, all eight tires changed. And I went to air up, hook up the trailer, hook to the tractor, and the air was blowing out everywhere in the back of the trailer. And I looked underneath there, and I could see somebody went under there with a knife, and they cut the air lines off. So the guy says, listen, I need to get out of here. And I said, so do I. He said, so what am I going to do? He said, so he called the, the owner, and he said, give him the lines off another trailer. So I went with this gentleman underneath these trailers looking for the set of lines that matched the ones that were cut. 
And in the process, he asked me, he says, well, why do you believe Sabbath is the seventh day? Or why do you go to church on Sabbath? And why do you call it Sabbath? I said, well, just like your Bible says, the fourth commandment. Do you keep it? And he looked at me and he didn't answer me. I said, Exodus, when Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, God says he hallowed the Sabbath day and he gave it to them to keep it. They didn't make it. This was God's gift to them. I said, in the book of Exodus, God said, this is a sign between me and my people. Are you keeping the Sabbath the way God commanded you? So, well, what about all the Protestants and all the Baptists? What about all the Methodists? I said, God knows the heart of every individual. But are you reading his holy word? Do you know what he's telling you? Do you understand what he wants of you? Excuse me. And he didn't answer that either. And he said, uh, why are you doing this mission work for nothing? I said, because it helps somebody else to come to know Christ. It's doing something good for somebody else that they don't understand that what they need. Are you doing your part in this world to helping others? And I didn't get an answer out of that. So then the comment came, what do you do? What else can you do as a missionary? I said, we are all given gifts. We're all gifted in individual. Every certain person has a different gift. Now, some of us have the same gifts, but we're, the gifts are all diverse. We're all different. That's why God needs us all to work together. So then he started to be a little more concerned, so he was really helping me then. And then we finally found a trailer parked in the mud with this long, thick, heavy grass growing up underneath it. And he said, okay, this is the right one now, but this is a mess. And I said, that's no problem. God will bless me if I do what he wants. So I got the lines out. I got them hooked onto the new trailer. And it was a witness to this gentleman that even as I didn't get paid to do any of that, I worked hard, I did my very best, and we were successful. Do you believe? Do you believe God is leading you? Do you believe God has a mission for you? Every single one of us have one. And no matter where I read in the Bible, they don't talk about retirement. So no matter what happens in my life, I know I'm still working for God. Amen. Every day. Whether it's somebody dropping their car off at my house that's broke down, or whether they're calling me up saying my car just died on the highway down here, I'm gone. I'm there to help. Wherever he can use me. Several weeks ago, I was go walking out of the church, and Keith Wallman asked me about preaching. I said, wherever God needs me, I will go. So as I read in the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, it has a lot of history. It has a lot of present age predictions that are accurate, along with future predictions that we can trust. What other book, where else can you go and read and understand what has happened and why and understand what's going to happen and prepare yourself and others? Now I ask you, do you believe in what you've learned in his written word? Are you really doing all you can to teach others the truth? Are you truly sharing the character of God? I do, and I try through reading every morning, praying frequently throughout the day. I try my best to do the work he's given us. In Matthew 28, 19 and 20, he said, Go therefore and make disciples of the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, 
And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. Amen. I prayed earnestly that as yesterday and I dealt with that gentleman, I pray earnestly and I will continue to pray earnestly that the seed I planted yesterday will come to fruition. He will open up his Bible now. He will see God's word in a different light. We all have special gifts, as it says in Romans 12, 6, that God gives gifts to each one of us to reach certain individuals. We are praying to have the eyes to see the opportunities that God gives us, to be the witnesses to the ones he has sent to us. Are we truly praying in one accord? Are we truly praying to do his will? Just as the disciples did in the upper room. We pray for our community. We pray for a lot of people. But today we're praying right here for this sanctuary that we all can do our very best. God's promises are what the people need to hear, they need some hope. They need something positive. In Proverbs, it says that uh, the good word spoken is like medicine. You know, we need to cheer people up. We need to give them a reason to go on. In Romans 10, 9 through 11, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him shall not be put to shame. What better hope can we have? In Romans ten thirteen, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I'm encouraging as many as I can to believe in his name. To call, to pray, ask, and you will be given. The blessing of salvation are for every soul. Nothing but his own choice can prevent any man from being a partaker of the promise of Christ by the gospel. Desire of Ages, page 403. It's our own choice. But there's so many people out there that have not heard the truth. If I hadn't had that pastor come in my garage at night, I thought I was on the right path. I didn't know any different. I thought I was the leader. I was wrong. But I had to have somebody come to me and tell me I was wrong. Are we bold enough to speak? You know, I know that gentleman yesterday didn't appreciate my comments at first. But by the time we left there, I felt... We made a friend. Sometimes it's not comfortable speaking the truth. But it has to. It has to be spoken. In 2 Chronicles 20, 15, I think about the story of Jehoshaphat. When the armies of Moab and Ammon and others wanted to wipe out all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, and he said to Jehoshaphat, Thus says the Lord to you, Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours. Sometimes it's hard to understand that that battle isn't ours. It's God's. He only uses us. Are we willing to be used? Are we willing to do his will? So they rose early in the morning. This is 2 Chronicles 20.20. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. Remember, To live for self is to perish. Covetousness and the desire 
for benefits, for self's sake, cuts off the soul from life. It's the spirit of Satan to get, to draw, to self. It is the spirit of Christ to give, to sacrifice self for the good of others. Christ Objects Lessons, page 259. This power is not in the human agent. It is the power of God. When a soul receives Christ, he receives the power to live the life of Christ. God requires perfection of his children. His law is transcript of his own character. It is the standard of all character. This is also in Christ Object Lessons, page 314. It was said earlier in this sanctuary, it's Christ in us that makes the difference. But unless we open the Bible, unless we speak the word and share the word, does it really stick with us? You know, it's one thing when I first started, I would read the word, but I wasn't sharing. I was just, I was relearning what I thought I knew. But it didn't stay with me until I started sharing it with others. The more I shared it with others, the more I told them what I read, what I understood, what it meant, the more it dwelt, the more I d- Christ dwelled in me. That's what we need to be that witness for others. In Mark eleven twenty four, therefore I say unto you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. God wants us to bless, to be blessed abundantly. It is faith that connects us with heaven and brings us strength for coping with the powers of darkness. In Christ, God has provided means for subduing every sinful trait and resisting every temptation, however strong. Look not to self, but to Christ. Faith comes by the word of God. So when we find ourselves in a situation where there's sin about to take place, or you see it, festering or or coming about. We need to be strong enough to stop it. We need to say something to our brethren to stop that. In 1994, I was a Lutheran in the church. My family, we all went to church every every Sunday. And there were several ladies in the church that started talking about my wife. I did all the deaconess duties. I did all the elders duties. My wife took care of all the financial stuff for the church. She took care of the flower funds, uh, getting the church prepared and ready for vespers or for uh, the dinners. Uh, So these few women started this conversation amongst themselves about how my wife was embezzling from the flower fund for the funeral services. That seemed so petty. That rumor took her life. My children I raised without a mother. We don't realize the power of our words. We don't realize other people, as they're talking, do we stop them? Do we get them to understand the power of their words? Are we bold enough to stand up for Christ and help somebody else? Uh, I lost it. It was in my head just a second ago. I lost the scripture. But what it was saying was, uh, how was the, how was the wording? As we show somebody else where they're sinning and we turn them from their wicked way, how we are cleansed. God will take away the sins that we don't even realize. Yes. Thank you. Yes. And uh, how we've got to do our very best for the Lord and for the ones around us. Romans 10, 6 through 10. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall uh, descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ 
uh, again from the dead. But who shall? Uh, but what does it really say? The word is near you, in your mouth, in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. The only way to get the word of faith in is to read it, is to understand it, is to live it. Are we doing what he commissioned us to do according to Mark 28, 19, and 20? Are we doing our best to teach them to observe all things that I have commanded you? And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. We know God is with us. It's our duty, it's our job to help others to see him, to realize him. It says in John 14, 12 through 14, Most assuredly I say unto you, He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do. Because I go to my Father, what, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. That's a huge promise. Are we doing his will? If we know, we know he's going to answer the prayer. <clears throat> My prayer every day, every morning, is that he uses me. But he fills me. I pray that my ears are open, that my eyes are open, my heart is softened. I want to be able to not only hear the voice, but know it's his voice. I want to hear his words that I have to speak to somebody else, not my words. The Lord is disappointed when his people place a low esteem upon themselves. He desires his chosen heritage to value themselves according to the price he has placed upon them. God wanted them, or else he would not have sent his son on such an expensive errand to redeem them. He is used, he has a use for them, and he is well pleased when they make the very highest demands upon him, that they may glorify his name. They may expect large things if they have the faith in his promises. I have my own promise books, but I also give out promise books, just so people, if they haven't read the Bible, can at least Look up some of the promises and get more of a hope. Get more of an understanding of what God wants to do for them. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ, born of God, and everyone who loves him, who begat, loves him who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. Are we showing the love of God with his gifts as he has given us? We know from Romans twelve six that we all have been given different gifts from the Holy Spirit. And we know by reading Revelations twelve fourteen, here are the patience of the saints, here are those who keep God's commandments. And the faith of Jesus. Now it's one thing to keep the commandments, but if you don't believe, it's one thing you can memorize this entire book, and it, which was great. But if you don't believe, you've lost it. You've got to believe in the promises. They're written for us. This is God's love letter to us. In John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We know how important we are to him. We know that he, to the extent that he went through the suffering he had to endure for our sins. In Mark 6, 22 and 23, 
Jairus, the ruler of the synagogue, came to Jesus, fell at his feet, and begged him earnestly, saying, My daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed, and she will live. And Mark 6, 35 and 36, While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard these words spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid, only believe. Mm -hmm. Now he said he's given us power. He said for us to believe. He said for us to pray. Are we praying and asking? Are we believing he's given? Are we seeing the miracles? We need to give these words to as many as we can, while we can, for we know the time is short. We know the truth. Just like the toy guys I talked to yesterday, I told them to go look up Matthew and read chapter 24 and learn what's going to happen in the future. We don't have a whole lot of time left to make choices. We need to start acting on what we're, we're given. We need to start doing our best. We need to do our part to help others and give them a hope for a better life, a life without sin. For me, I struggle a little. Because in Revelations it says, there will be no more tears. He's going to wipe them all away. He said there will be there no more pain. I've had pain for so many years, I can't even imagine it. I can't imagine it, and I try to. You know, I think of my grandson, how we tell him this, and he believes it. This is it. I've read it. I've been told it. But I've had pain for so many years, I can't imagine a life without pain. But it's going to be. i got to believe it's going to be. But I just can't imagine it. But i got to believe in it. His word is written for us. But not only for us, for all those on this earth. I may not be the best preacher. I may not be the best witness. But through the grace of God and through his Holy Spirit, and through his angels, may I do the best I can wherever he sends me. May you be blessed. May you spread the word. May you give somebody some hope. And protect them from the sinful one and the evils of this world. And we know it's evil everywhere. It's up to us to do our very best. Amen. May God bless each one of you. You have been watching the Ogden Road Seventh-day Adventist Church. We hope you enjoyed this presentation.